Hello, my name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon. I have a tremendous experience in managing arteriovenous malformations of the brain, and today I am uh, honored to have a chance to talk to my patients about treating these complex lesions. Um, I have been involved with the care of uh, more than 500 surgical patients suffering from this disorder, and I can tell you that treating these lesions have been some of the most satisfying experiences in my life. So let's uh, get uh, to the discussion about what are the arteriovenous malformations. There are abnormal blood vessels that, or abnormal blood vessel connections that do not have capillaries that are normally found between the arteries and the veins in the brain. And because that um, capillary is missing, there are abnormal pressures within these arteries and veins, and there could be also some stealing of the blood and oxygen from the nearby blood vessels, and that can cause minor stroke symptoms. But most importantly, arteriovenous malformations can rupture and bleed and cause a hemorrhage within the brain and uh, cause weakness, numbness, or other associated symptoms. Fortunately, arteriovenous malformations are rare. They affect less than 1% of the general population, and the bleeding accounts for 2% of all the strokes in the United States. Symptoms are more likely seen in the ages between 20 to 40 years of age. In fact, this disorder is most often occurring in younger people. What are the common terminologies related to arteriovenous malformations, or in other words, AVMs? Number one is the capillaries. As we discussed, there are small vessels that uh, they are one cell thick that normally exists between the arteries and veins. What is an artery? Artery is a blood vessel that carries oxygenated blood towards the two shoes of the brain. And the vein, in fact, is a blood vessel that carries the oxygenated blood back to the heart. Let's talk about AVM rupture. Again, the most common symptoms are the rupture. Most often, AVMs don't present with symptoms unfortunately until the rupture occurs. In other words, the patient doesn't know that they carry that malformation in their brain until the sudden event occurs. The risk of rupture is estimated to be around 2 to 4 percent, most likely around 2 percent per year for somebody who is suffering from an AVM. It can be fatal if it's not treated properly. In other words, the malformation can be life-threatening if it's not treated on time. The AVM bleeding can push against the brain tissue and cause symptoms as well. The bleeding is really like a mass effect or a mass in the brain that's abnormal. And within the closed bony skull space, this extra mass suddenly can pressurize the surrounding normal structures, or in other words, increase the normal intracranial or the pressure within the skull. This compression can uh, injure the brain tissues in the surrounding area and cause two very significant neurological symptoms. What are the less common symptoms from an arteriovenous malformation is visual loss, muscle weakness or numbness, speaking difficulties, confusion, or unsteadiness. What are the tests that we do to diagnose arteriovenous malformation? Number one is a magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, and also angiography. What is an angiography? A catheter is placed into an artery in a leg or an arm and passed through the blood vessels into the brain and we inject a dye or contrast uh, a dye and take x-rays and images and videos to visualize the structure of the vessels in the brain as well as the malformation. What are the treatment options? Number one is observation, number two is radiosurgery, number three is surgical resection, and number four in certain cases is embolization. Sometimes a combination of all the above are used. Let's talk about more in detail about the option of observation. It's favorable for older patients with no history of avian bleeding or in fact lower cumulative lifetime risk of bleeding. Let's talk about radiosurgery. Radiosurgery means concentrated beams of radiation that are aimed at the abnormal vessels of the malformation or the AVM to close off the blood supply to the AVM. It takes about one hour 
to perform or apply the radiation. However, the treatment can take one, two to three years to destroy or close off the malformation completely. So it's very important for our patients to know that the treatment takes up to three years to complete and be effective. And those three years, during those times, the patient can be exposed to another risk of hemorrhage. This treatment modality is especially favorable for small AVMs in very deep and sensitive locations where surgical resection can be uh, of significant risk. So what about surgery? Surgery is an excellent option for complete removal of the malformation from the surrounding normal vessels and brain tissues. The great thing about the surgery is that it provides immediate cure. In other words, when the malformation is removed, especially in adults, the risk of recurrence is very small. And in children, the risk of uh, recurrence is very small. And uh, obviously, if they undergo surgery, they have to be undergoing another angiogram in a year or after the surgery to make sure there's no further recurrence. But most often, the risk of recurrence after surgery for an AVM is exceedingly small. How about embolization? It is very similar as the procedure you do for diagnostic angiography where the catheter is inserted in your um, forearm or in the leg and the dye injected. However, after doing that procedure, we inject special glue to block the blood flow to the malformation. It takes three to eight hours. You may need um, to be in the hospital for a day or so. It may be used, as I mentioned, in combination with other treatments. However, um, embolization by itself is not a cure to the malformation, and it has to be combined with other treatment modalities for an in, uh, endurable uh, or permanent good outcome. What about AVM outcomes? Uh, the complete cure is possible, as I said, via microsurgical techniques and resection. For small AVMs, in other words, less than three centimeter diameter, the cure rate is more than 90 to 95%. And after surgery, it can take four to, six, four to six weeks for you to go back to usual level of function and uh, up to two to three months to fully recover from the surgery, depending on the type of the surgery and the size of the malformation. So finally, um, I just want to close by mentioning really my significant expertise and interest in the management of these arteriovenous malformations. In fact, arteriovenous malformation surgery is my most favorite operation. I have been really lucky and blessed to have been able to be involved in the care of so many patients uh, that uh, unfortunately we're suffering from arteriovenous malformation. Um, uh, uh, lesions, however, after surgery, have returned completely to their normal level of function and are very much enjoying their lifestyles. Thank you.